Hey guys, it's Ray with Spray Wash. We got called out here for an emergency service on a dumpster pad, so I've come out early to uh, look this dumpster pad over, uh, see what materials my guys are gonna need, and just wanted to go over with you some of the things that we talk about whenever we're doing a dumpster pad, some of the things to keep in mind whenever you're gonna do a service like this. So hang tight and uh, we'll get on it here. All right, so this is a pretty standard uh, two-stall uh, dumpster pad. And uh, if you'll notice, uh, there's a bunch of crap in here too. A lot of times we find that on the dumpster pads. Uh, so one of the first things that we're going to have to do is come in here with our little trash grabbers and toss all of the junk into one of the the dumpsters here. Now this one isn't horrible, horrible with grease. Uh, there is some grease here, but I've seen them a lot worse. Now here's an area of concern to me uh, along in here. Um, this is a dirt, mud, muck, nastiness buildup. One of the best things that you can do in this area, instead of trying to wash that away, is get a square point shovel and go ahead and physically remove those weeds and that muck down there, putting them into the dumpster. That'll be a lot easier and a lot less nasty than trying to pressure wash that junk up. Now, one of the things that we'll do, because this is a dumpster and it's nasty, uh, once we get all the, the trash picked up, once we get the mud and the muck um, knocked out of this area, um, first thing that I'm going to do just for my health and safety of my employees is come in here with a bleach mixture because you know behind an enclosure like this people uh, come in you know the homeless um, oh hell sometimes the college students will come in here and pee and, and, and poop and make this a very unsanitary mess. This one, believe it or not, is really not in bad shape. I wish every dumpster pad we did was, was actually this clean. But I'm gonna come in here and douse everything down with a good bleach mixture. Probably about a 20% SH, just to kill any biological uh, nastiness that's hanging around here so we don't pick up some kind of infection. Okay, then after we get that bleach sitting down, uh, I'm going to use a caustic degreaser. And when I say a caustic degreaser, I mean something with a lot of sodium hydroxide, possibly even potassium hydroxide. The name brands of the one that I like, um, you have Ground Force from Agent Clean, and you also have Gold Assassin uh, by, um, uh, uh, Bobby Fig uh, CBD Solutions. Uh, those are my two favorite caustic degreasers. And if you don't understand the difference between a caustic degreaser and a regular degreaser, now's a really good time to get some education on yourself in there. There's some degreasers like that are butyl based or that are safe degreasers uh, like EBC, which is a fantastic degreaser, but I'm not going to use it for something like that. I want a nasty chemical. I want something that's going to really get in there and destroy this food grease, destroy this petroleum grease, and destroy all the nastiness that's accumulated in here. Now, uh, something else uh, we're gonna do. Uh, the walls in here, and I probably should have mentioned this to start with. This is, an, this is just nasty. Uh, whenever we come in here with that bleach solution to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and spray these walls down. That's gonna get this biological staining that's on these walls. It'll kill that. It'll bring it back to a nice uh, paint that the original color is supposed to be and not this, this just muck color. Cause this is really a lot of algae uh, that's growing in here from the, and it's just a perfect little area. It doesn't get sunlight. So just a lot of goo and, and, and things on the ground here. It stays moist. Um, it just allows that. So we'll spray that bleach all around the outside of this area as well. So then after about a 20 minute dwell time of my bleach and my caustic degreaser sitting down here, you know, 
on the dumpsters down on this area on the concrete um, I've scooped up all the muck I've picked up all the trash I have put bleach on stuff I've now gone in there and put a caustic degreaser down I'm now gonna bust out the hot water pressure washer and we're gonna go to town on that and whenever you're doing these dumpster pads like this to really be efficient you need hot water do you have to have it no you can clean it up it's gonna take you three four five times as long without doing it you know could you use like no chemical sure you could but it's gonna take you ten times as long uh, use a good chemical because the name of this game is being efficient we want to sanitize. We want to sterilize. We want to make it look presentable. We don't want to make it look like a mess. But you also want to do it safely and you want to do it, most importantly, efficiently. In a perfect world, in an absolute, absolute perfect world, Marpan Supply, who's the manager of these, of these dumpsters, that's the company that comes in and tips the dumpsters, they would actually pull them out of the way for me. They would pull them out, set them over there, or come out and swap the dumpsters out, and during that period, uh, I could clean the whole pad. You get pretty lucky whenever that happens. This is an emergency cleanup, so we're going to be cleaning around these dumpsters. I'm not going to have the luxury of having these dumpsters pulled from the pad. Do you know what else we want to talk about? Water. We need to make sure we have a water source for this project here. So we can either go to the back side of the, of the shopping center over there, see if any of the, the, the water outlets are working. Uh, worst case scenario, we could rent a hydrant meter for my fire plug right over there. You never want to tap into those things if you're not allowed to. Hydrant meter is a little bit excessive and is going to get kind of pricey. In my area, they're $1,500 to rent. That's not a $1,500 job. If it's allowed in your area, you might be able to get water from one of the backflow preventers. But again, I would check with your local municipality to make sure that's a legal practice where you're working at. You know, one of the big questions we're always going to get on a project like this is, what kind of money are you getting from this? Well, in my market, this is about $650 for a double stall in this condition of about $650 there. This job should not take us more than two to two and a half hours. And that's really working at a leisurely pace. Now, in your market, it might be less in your market it might be more that's where you're going to have to get out there and figure out what's the going rate in my market but i'll tell you what it's not a 99 dollars job don't get out here and just go this bottom feeder give your services away rate you can get real money for jobs like this you know three hours 650 dollars it's not bad freaking money it's over $200 an hour. Also, this is where professional equipment, professional grade chemicals, and a professional mindset is going to help you be at the top of your game, help you work efficiently, and help you sell yourself to this property manager. Remember, you're only going to get one shot. You come out here with your 2.3 Ryobi and a bottle of Clorox and give them crap results, you're never going to get a chance to work for them again. This is Ray with Spray Wash Pro. Hope you all learned a lot from this video. Thanks for watching. Wash on.